Hi, I'm Francisco Kuhlhoven. I'm an estate manager at Inspiration Island, and I've worked with Marley Molina, the founder of Octagon Creative Exploration, here in Second Life for many years. If you've watched her introductory videos, you already know that Marley has devised an exciting technique called symbolic modeling, or SimMod for short, based on concepts from Gestalt psychology and field theory. SimMods allow people and groups to explore feelings, values, ideas, or challenges of different kinds using virtual reality sculptures or drawings. As a result, SimMods can be a powerful way to build empathy, change perspective, and produce insight into complex issues or social messes, particularly in educational settings. One social mess that Marley explores through SimMods is the subject of climate change. Building on groundbreaking work by Bob Horn, who has mapped climate change pathways, decision points, and their outcomes with Marley's chart of attitudes about climate change, are also presented by Bob in a different form, workshop participants build symbolic models representing a number of well-worn positions in the debate. Participants are asked to go to a numbered building platform which corresponds with an attitude or position on Marley's chart and to build a symbolic representation or simmod of the feeling state and or idea connected to that position. These positions are often assigned randomly to each participant rather than having them choose their preferred position in order to get individuals out of their comfort zone. Participants are asked to become each part and the whole of their sim mod and give it a voice. They might experiment with moving in, above, or around it to acquire different insights or views to express. Changing their virtual perspectives, participants develop unexpected empathy and affinity for certain positions and imagine new possibilities for movement and growth within the climate change debate. Let's take a look at one workshop interaction in which Lucena builds a sim mod representing the position, there's no problem, disasters have occurred periodically throughout history, which implies dissociation. We apologize for some sound issues in the following clip. State the position in I language for us. I don't think there's any problem. Disasters have occurred periodically throughout history. Way too much concern about this. There are several parts to this object. Speak to us as those aspects of this position. I'm going to move into the object. This is how I built it. Okay, I'm, I'm first of all, right now, I am inside my object. Okay, and I can't see anybody or anything except the object. So to you, the object, you are extremely, you're springtime green. When I look at you, I don't see anything except green. Everything looks fine to me in here. I don't have to see anything, even though I'm feeling really uncomfortable about something else that's going on here. Okay, now if you were speaking as that green part, how would you represent yourself? I am making you feel good. I mean, don't go beyond me. You just enjoy where you are right here. I'm comforting you. I'm taking care of you. You don't have to see anything. This thing around me is really annoying, but you don't have to pay attention to it. Don't look up. Don't look out. <laughs> okay. All right. Great. All right. Now go to the thing around and be that. Hey, I'm crazy. I'm spinning crazily. I'm I'm out here and you're not paying attention to me. You just control you you cover her, you control her, you don't let her pay attention to me. I'm here though, you can't get rid of me. Summarize what this a whole build symbolically is saying or representing. So this inside here if I stay if I stay inside this nice little place that's very beautiful and green. I don't have to think about anything. 
Everything feels fine, except there is this niggling feeling I have that there's something sort of out of whack or crazy around it somehow, but I don't want it to feel it or, or see it. So I'm going to stay inside here, which is a little constricting now that I think about it. Nobody else can really fit in here. <laughs> but, but this is my solution to the whole subject. Okay, wonderful. Okay, if anyone else can amplify this position, can say anything more, being in this position, come onto the platform and say it. Well, I'm coming from the spiritual position, so I would say everything will be taken care of. It will all be all right. You've got this little niggling thing going on, but don't worry about it. Everything's going to be fine because that's the way it's intended to be. Okay, thank you. So you can see how powerful this technique can be. Here's a reflection by Lucena of her experience in this workshop. I'm always impressed by the power of doing this kind of work because when you start really trying to express position, which was not my usual position, of course, that was more difficult, things happen that you don't expect. So I kept changing what I was doing more than I expected to give a sense of this dual response I had. And I wish we had been able to do more of the positions because they were all so interesting that going around and hearing other positions, I could feel it started to modify mine. And by the time we got to the end, there was a process that actually did occur in my body as well as in my mind. While this video uses the social mess of climate change as an example, the possibilities for using sim mods to get out of our minds, as one workshop participant puts it, in educational settings are limitless. For example, here's a Gestalt workshop participant who explored feelings of her own nervousness through a sim mod and experienced a breakthrough over the course of the session. One of the things in, in Gestalt therapy is to let the struggle or the disclosure, the uh, uncomfortableness, just stay with the client and let her take responsibility for working out the problem. Okay, what feels right is... I have to make this so that I can walk into it. There we go. Oh, so that you can have a voice from the inside out? Yeah. Great idea. Okay, that's how it feels right now. Okay, I'm going to stand up and walk around and see what's happening with you. Okay, so you're now inside this structure that you've created. Can you take the role of that structure and when you're ready for V to respond, then you can come out and face the structure, okay? I have complete control over you right now. See? I've got you in my grasp. You can't ignore me now. In fact, it's even better if I tighten down on you. That's right. How does that feel? So, there was a little lie there on the part of the structure. The structure imagines that it has you in its grasp and the truth is that you can move in and out of it at your will. So that's an interesting dichotomy. So in, in, uh, in my real life, I'm, I'm feeling um, this, this structure. I do feel the tightness in my, in my arms and my legs, you know, mm -hmm. as though it were holding me in. You're right, you've got, you've got a lot of control over me. I, I can really feel how you've got me around my arms and my legs. But I can, I can step outside you. You can. You can step outside. It's worth exploring the symbol as you have it to begin with. Notice how it's affecting your body at home. And notice what happens as you move in and out of it. Whether that produces any changes in your body experience. And what you want to do next. Oh, I definitely feel a difference stepping out. Hmm. Stepping back into it, however, I don't, 
I don't immediately feel it's control. So something's shifting. Now, uh, for the people who are uh, watching this, and you notice that we've gone through sensation, awareness, and mobilization of energy. And now there's a little bit of excitement because Verita notices that she can take a number of different actions here. And it's up to her to decide how she, she wants her relationship to be to her nervousness. How big it is, how much it encompasses her, how much control she has over it. She has a lot of different choices, particularly here in Second Life, which also are affecting how she feels in her actual body. You could imagine this technique being applied to any personal, political, or social issue to help generate meaningful change or understanding. Next, we witness Marley and Sophia using a drawing board to explore a concept, and Marley pointing out the similarities and differences in their sim mods. We're putting up an exercise that I did with someone else based on a concept, and the concept is freedom. It's called Images of Freedom. So I was drawing on the left side of the board, and another Avi named Sophia was drawing on the right side of the board. This is an example of how you can take a concept or a value or an idea and play around with people's different notions of that idea. Sophia chose the concept of freedom. So in this one, we each were drawing on one side of the board and the handwriting, of course, I did freehand with a pencil. But Here's what you can notice, that the images of freedom are very different, but there are some similarities which come through in the colors. There are a certain number of colors that you can use, but of course uh, nothing would prevent someone from using all one color. It turns out that both of us used the colors available. We're, making, we're both making a statement that the more tools we have, the more colors we can use, the more ways we have of expressing, the freer we are and the freer we feel. So that's what's in common. But then the way we conceptualize is very different. So mine here is more sort of like a growing abstract plant that has got branches and leaves and I'm a growing thing. My freedom is not either concrete or there all the time. It's ephemeral. It comes and goes. So just like things grow on me in different seasons, you know, sometimes I've got bare branches. That's like what's on top. Sometimes I have leaves. Sometimes I'm growing new roots. And sometimes my leaves are just floating free in the air. So my experience of freedom, although it's kind of rooted in an object in nature, takes different form. So that's a little bit of the way I express my concept of freedom. Now over here, Sophia starts with a kind of a grid through which these river-like things are flowing. And then up on top, a kind of a, like a happy face. And there may be a little thing like a tree that's sort of like the tree on top of mine. We weren't watching each other as we were doing this. We were just doing our own thing. But one of the things that happens when you do this work collaboratively is often the collective consciousness chips in. Just like if I do dream work with a group of people, often people will report dreams that have similar kinds of imagery in them. And I think that that is always going on, that we're picking stuff up that's in the atmosphere that we, we may not be consciously aware of. So... I'm seeing that there's this image, you see it to the upper left of Sophia's image, that does have a correspondence to the image on the top of my image. We probably each, we spent about two minutes making the drawings, and then probably about ten minutes explicating them or becoming the drawings and seeing what was there. And there are always new discoveries to be made that you're not aware of when you're actually building or making the drawing or doing the thing that come from this kind of exploration. 
What possibilities could you imagine? You can start exploring that today. Are you an educator or facilitator working in Second Life who would like to explore this technique in your own work? Please get in touch with Marley Molina or consider joining Octagon Creative Exploration for all notices of future events.